This is video 18 in our series uh, Topics in Tensor Analysis. In this video we're going to derive the relation between Christoffel symbols and the metric tensor. Um, reminder that the uh, playlist for the videos is at the website digital-university.org. Okay, in video number 17 we derive these equations where here we have the partial of a tangential vector to for a, a curved linear coordinate. We're taking the partial derivative of it with respect to one of the curved linear coordinates and we get this equation. And again we derive that in video number 17. This is the Christoffel symbol and we can find its value by taking this dot product. And again this was all the subject matter um, in uh, the last video, uh, video 17. Then in video 12 we had defined the metric tensor and that is just simply the dot product of two tangential vectors. When we say tangential vectors of course we mean the vectors that are tangent to a particular uh, curve linear coordinate axis at a particular space and time. Now before we go on it's worthwhile noting the partial of EI with respect to UJ as we discussed in video number 17 that really is taking the second derivative of the position vector with respect to UJ and with respect to UI. Well, of course, it doesn't matter which order we take these partial derivatives. Instead of being u, j, and i, we could take the partial with respect to i, then the partial with respect to j. That's the same thing. But now this we would label as the partial of e, j with respect to u, i. Notice that this corresponds to the outer one. These two are the inner ones. So here, this corresponds with the outer one. These two here are the inner ones. Well, this we can write with the Christoffel symbol as we just did right here. So gamma ij ij repeated index k. This we can write with the Christoffel symbol that would be gamma ji repeated index k. So that implies that these two Christoffel symbols are identical. So if we switch these lower indexes it doesn't change the value of the Christoffel symbol. And of course for the metric tensor gij that would be the same thing as gji because we're just simply changing the order that we're taking our dot product in and the dot product is commutative. Okay, so now with that in mind let's consider taking a partial derivative of the metric tensor. Say we're going to take the partial derivative g i j with respect to one of the um, curve linear coordinates, we'll call it um, UK. So that will be equal to, now here we have a product, so we'll hold this constant then take the partial derivative of this. So the partial of EI with respect to UK dot ej plus, now we hold this constant, so we have e i dot the partial derivative of e j with respect to u k. Well these then we can express them using Christoffel symbols. So we have partial of G 
IJ with respect to UK will equal this we could use we have gamma IK IK then we need a repeated index let's call it L so that's this then we have dot EJ plus from here we have EI dot now we can express this with a Gestapo symbol so we have gamma JK JK and our repeated index again we can use L but this is a metric tensor G L J and here we have another metric tensor G I L so what we have then is we can say that the partial derivative of G I J with respect to U K equals we have Gustafo symbol I K L times the metric tensor L J plus we have the Christoffel symbol JKL and then we have the metric tensor GIL so right now we have this equation and we have it written out over here this is what we just derived now what happens if we shuffle these indexes around let's say that IJK we have instead keep it in focus JKI what kind of expression do we get on this side so let's look up here here we have IK that's from IK so here we would have J I. and then they have the metric tensor here's the repeated index repeated index the outer symbol here goes down here the outer symbol here goes down here and then over here we have J K from here so that would be K I and then the repeated index is on the outside of the metric tensor there's the repeated index this was the inner one here here the inner one is J and finally if we shuffle these around again from J K I to K I J then okay this was J I right from here this would be K J here's the repeated index this was the outer one from up here here's the outer one we put it down here then here K I from here that would be I J the repeated index is on the outer part of the metric tensor there's the repeated index this was the inner label the inner label here is K so we have these three equations now let's see here we have JK L here we have KJ L I L L I so these are the same here and here um, I K K I L J J L so these are the same and then here 
J-I-I-J-L-K-K-L. -K -K These are the same. Now, let's consider what happens if we add these two together. Then we'll have this plus this. And here, adding these two together, we could say it's just two times this. So when we add these two together, we'll have two times this. Now, plus these terms, if we subtract this one, then this term and this term cancel, this term and this term cancel. So if we add these two together, then subtract this one, we end up with this plus this, or we can just write that simply as 2 times this. And again, we obtain this by this plus this, and then we subtract it out that. So let's write that out. on the whiteboard. Okay, we have this two times two times gamma I, J, L, metric tensor, K, L. That is this, and that was obtained from this plus this minus this, which I'm going to write down right now. This equals partial G K I with respect to U J plus partial G J K with respect to U I minus partial G I J with respect to UK. And again, that was this term plus this term minus this term. Now we can multiply both sides of the equation by one half. And we have this expression. Now, remember from, I think it was video number 15, when we were discussing more of the properties of metric tensors, if we multiply, say, GKL by, say, GMK, that gives us chronic or delta, and then that will have components to it LM. And again, we discussed this in uh, video number 15. So we're going to use that, though, right here. We're going to multiply both sides of this equation by GMK. So on this side, we're going to have this Gustafel symbol I J L G K L, then multiply by G M K. On the other side of the equation, we will have 
one half G M K times these partial derivatives. Okay, now keep this in better focus. This is Kronecker delta L M. So on this side of the equation we have Christoffel symbol I J L times the Kronecker delta L M. And this is equal to zero unless L is equal to M. Then it's one. So that means this becomes an M. This L has to be equal to M, otherwise that's zero in case it's one. So this becomes M, so we have this multiplied by one. And that is equal to one half G M K and then we have our partial derivatives. The partial of G K I with respect to U J plus the partial of G J K with respect to U I minus partial G I J with respect to U K. And here then this equation right here tells us then the relation between a Christoffel symbol and metric tensors. And again, this, remember, this is equal to zero unless L carries the M label. This is M, then this is just one. So I have this times one, which is just this. So that is our final equation, and this then tells us the relationship between Gustafel symbol and the metric tensors. Okay, we'll make use of this in future videos. What we'll do in the next two videos is um, determine a Gustafel symbol for cylindrical coordinates. And then once we have that under our belt, then we're ready to discuss uh, covariant differentiation of tensors. So hope this was useful. And anyway, come back and join us for some more videos, and we'll continue on here with our discussion.